What's up everybody, Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Going to be presenting the Full Grip League Tournament here tonight. We've got Brady Botner on the left versus Andrew Barlow on the right for round one. Brady is going to be piloting a Whimsicott GX Porygon deck. And Andrew Barlow is going to be piloting a Blissey deck here for our table tat our tabletop match this evening should be a great match of uh, apparently blissey did perform very well at the north american international championships and andrew barlow is going to be showing off that list that did finish uh in day two at the north american international championships brady botner showing us porygon z here featuring whimsicott and Double colorless energy, triple acceleration energy, a bunch of special energy to accelerate into play. And then it's going to be relying on that fluffy cotton ability on Whimsicott GX, hopefully flipping some heads to prevent damage from Andrew Barlow. It looks like Brady is drawing first, so he's going to be first to play here, starting a Porygon in the active position. It's going to attach a unit energy there and play one of those nice promo Cynthia's from the regional championships. I think that's the regional championship Cynthia there. Very nice promo card. Excellent artwork on that. And off of the Cynthia, Brady is going to be looking for some cottonies for sure in order to ensure himself a turn two Whimsicott, a wants to get Whimsicott set up as quickly as possible. Mr. Caldwell, thank you so much for that sub. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for the support, Mr. Caldwell. And then Brady is going to be utilizing Porygon Z's crazy code ability to flood the field with energy. Looks like he does bench a Marshadow. MIB Nation, thank you so much for that Twitch Prime sub. Six months. Enjoy your new sub badge there. Brady does find an Ultra Ball. He's got the uh, reset hole Marshadow on his bench as well, so he's going to be able to remove any potential stadiums from play if he wants to. And he places a Cottony there onto his bench, so he does find that Cottony with Ultra Ball. Ideally, he would like a second Cottony, but really, so long as he's got a Porygon and a Cottony, he is ready to go for turn two to potentially get a Porygon Z and a Whimsicott. I don't think that Barlow is going to be aggressing here turn one with his Blissey deck, but I could be wrong. Chansey does have an attack. We'll see what Chansey's attack is here. I'm not super familiar with with the card, so to look it up, we'll see Chansey from Lost Thunder for three energy, sympathetic slap. If your opponent's active Pokemon already has any damage counters on it, this attack does uh, before this attack does damage, it does nothing. So, since the Porygon has no damage counters on it, Barlow could actually be threatening a turn one attack with this Chansey if he does get to Welder for two and then attach one energy from hand looks like he's finding a lily though so he's not going to be going for that turn one welder play i think he just wants to establish his board a little bit better we spend some more time setting up which i think is totally reasonable i'm going to go ahead and show off that chancy there in the active position Wow. Barlow appears to be playing three Poke Gears on the first turn of the game. So starting three Poke Gears is really weird. He's already got his Lily, but he's just trying to burn uh, as many cards as he can from his top deck. And he's like, yeah, I don't even uh, want to use that. I'm just going to burn it, fail it, and then Lily. So he's getting as 
big of a hand as he can. I think I saw three Poke Gears. I might have been mistaken. Might have only been two Poke Gears there. Can't tell. Either way, going for a big Lily here. He's got a second Chansey for his bench. Fire Energy on his active. And considering an Ultra Ball, I assume that he may want to set up another Pokemon or maybe just save that Ultra Ball for a Blissey next turn. Thank you so much, Willie Mizzou, for the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you, thank you. Looks like Barlow has got a Ditto Prism Star, potential Let Loose as well. I think I see Arcanine potentially in this deck. Not actually sure what the uh, top Blissey deck at NAIC was playing. So I'm not super familiar with this list. So it should be a treat for all of us to kind of take a closer look at this deck and see how it was successful. Andrew does go for the Ditto Prism Star and a pass here. Offering it back up to Brady, who's got a Whimsicott in his hand and a Lily for five. So he's going to be evolving that. Oh, thank you so much. Corgis waddling. Is that you, Andrew Dankus? I thought you were waddling Corgis. Thank you so much, Dankus, for the sub. Is that you, Dankus? Or is that an alter ego of the Andrew Dankus? Anyways, thank you guys so much. Thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. Brady has got a backup Cottony now. Whimsicott in play. And he does have an Ultra Ball in his hand, I think. I remember from the turn previous. So if he does play Dedenne GX, could be an option for him to use to Dene GX. Instead, he's just gonna go for Porygon's attack. He actually flips three coins and gets, wow, three tails. Oh, this is, uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Dankus. I was gonna say, Dankus has uh, multiple Prime accounts, it looks like. Thank you so much, Dankus, for the support through multiple Prime accounts. Brady failing his Porygon's attack there, meaning that he was not able to search his deck for any special energy cards. He is setting up his one Whimsicott, though, with a DCE. And Barlow, going to have an opportunity to knock out this Porygon in the active position with his Blissey that he now has front and center. Using Fiery Flint, going to guarantee himself the fire energy that he needs to perform this attack. And with Powerful Slap, you'll get to flip three coins, and if one of them is heads, he will deal enough damage to one-hit KO this Porygon. Now, as we just saw with Brady, three coin flips does not guarantee a heads. Well, Brady did fail his, uh, his attack there, and Actually, looks like this deck is playing Salazzle as the draw engine. Didn't really see that coming. That's very interesting. And then Blissey, now front and center. Going to be able to perform that powerful slap attack. Looking for one heads with powerful slap. There is the heads. And that Porygon is KO'd. Now, Barlow will go up a prize here, taking the first knockout. And Brady has an Ultra Ball in his hand. Going to go for maybe either backup Whimsicott, a Porygon, or perhaps a draw Pokemon. Looks like he does have a backup Whimsicott, so two Whimsicotts in play now. And a Cynthia. Brady desperately needs a Rainbow Energy or a Blend Energy. I think Unit, unit Energy is what they're called. And then he will be able to energy blow. However, energy blow 
only dealing a potential 100 damage this turn, so he's not going to be able to take a one-hit KO since his Porygon did get knocked out this last turn. I think I might have liked to see Brady retreat his Porygon into maybe Marshadow or his other Cottony in order to give himself an opportunity to potentially get a Porygon into play this turn. Now, looks like Brady is potentially playing some charms in his deck. I don't think that the charms are really going to do anything in this matchup since Barlow's deck appears to be a non-GX centric deck and the fairy charms only prevent GX Pokemon's damage. Does look like Brady does have a Ultra Ball again and I don't see any Dedenne GXs or anything. So it looks like he may just and that might actually be a Dedenne in his hand so I might be speaking too soon. Dedenne is a liability in this matchup. He does have to worry about it getting knocked out. But there it is. Day Day Change. He's got a Porygon on his bench. Dedenne coming down. He's got the rainbow energy that he needs. Putting himself at 180 hit points remaining. And he's going to slug away with Energy Blow. Now, I don't know how I feel about uh, Energy Blow here. I think if he does use Energy Blow, that's fine, but a Toy Box GX might actually be optimal here so that he can guarantee himself the cards that he needs to set up his Porygon. And then if Barlow does maybe Guzma the Porygon this next turn, then Brady will have the energy he needs in his hand to one-hit KO the Blissey. But it looks like he is just going to go for the energy blow here, which is fine. Dealing damage to the biggest threat Andrew has on his board is totally okay. Now, this is about to be extremely flippy. First of all, Brady needs to flip a Tails for Andrew Barlow's attack to even connect with the Whimsicott GX. Then, once, uh, once the attack goes through... Barlow needs to flip three heads in order to one-hit KO this Whimsicott GX. So we're about to see quite a bit of coin flips here in this game, which should be pretty exciting to see if this Whimsicott survives the turn, could decide the fate of this entire match here. But it looks like Barlow is having no problems loading up energy onto these Pokemon we're seeing that he's going to be able to Welder again, choosing to accelerate to his benched Blissey that he's been able to set up. He also has triple acceleration energy in his hand, so putting that onto his active Blissey will give him a pretty decent chance of being able to flip three heads that he needs to one-hit KO this Whimsicott. Of course, three heads is only if Brady flips a Tails on the Fluffy Cotton ability on Whimsicott GX. So we see Barlow also has a Let Loose Marshadow in his hand. He could decide to go in with that, limit both players to four cards in hand, but I think Barlow can just keep the hand. Seems fine. And it looks like Barlow flips first, actually. It's interesting, right? So he's got two heads. So far, wow, might not actually even get the three. It looks like he does not. And that damage was prevented anyway with Fluffy Cotton. So didn't matter. Fluffy Cotton coming in clutch, preventing all of that damage. Brady now has three Whimsicots in play. And is going to be taking out Barlow's main attacker. No supporter card played or anything. Just a fluffy cotton block and a KO. Both players tied at five prizes now. Barlow going to be looking for a second triple acceleration energy in order to boost this potential damage from Blissey again. 
But at this point, he's got to be pretty concerned that Brady can mow through these blissies. And if Brady keeps flipping heads, it's going to be a, a bad time for Barlow. That's just, that's just it. And it's got to be kind of depressing that no matter how well Barlow plays, he only has a 50% chance of connecting with these Whimsicots, which could just be disastrous. Looks like Barlow is going to Lily here to refill his hand to six, drawing four cards off of the Lily. And he would really like to welder this turn in order to increase his odds. Or he can't welder, he just lilied. And he attached for turn. So the only way that Barlow is going to get a one-hit KO on this Whimsicott this turn is if he has four coin flips go his way. He has to flip three heads, and then Brady has to flip a tails in order to get this one-hit KO. Now we did see that Barlow is shuffling in that Victini, Victory Star Victini, which allows him to reflip his coin flips for turn if he can find it. He's got a backup Chansey now. Finding the Victini could be very good because it could allow him to reflip. If he does flip, maybe three tails or just two heads, he can try again. Now Barlow is already attached for turn. Looks like he's going to use his second Salazzle there and finds Nest Ball. And we could expect to see that Victory Star Victini hit the bench. Barlow now able to reflip his coin flips if he would like. And I really like this build of Blissey here, just relying solely on Blissey to attack. Triple Acceleration Energies, Welders, Salazzles. There's a lot of synergy here. With that Choice Band, Barlow only needs two heads in order to take a knockout, dealing a perfect 190 damage. He's got one right there and a second. And we'll see if Brady can survive. He does. He blocks it again. Unbelievable. Two fluffy cotton flips in a row. This Whimsicott is invincible. Brady going to, I mean, you might as well just stack it all on the active. Take this one-hit KO on Barlow's only Blissey. He's dealing 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, plus 10 with Energy Blow for a perfect 160 damage. That Blissey is a goner. Brady going to go down to four prizes remaining. And Barlow left with only an energyless Chansey. In the active position, he's got his work cut out for him for sure. He wasted a lot of resources on that last Blissey. We see that he does have the Blissey in his hand. But at this point, Brady has not even needed the Porygon Z. He's got enough energy on this Whimsicott GX to one-hit KO all of Barlow's Pokemon. And has got there with... Pure luck alone. Flipping heads on Fluffy Cotton 50% of the time. It works every time. We see Barlow conceding his non-GX board state by putting a Tapu Lele GX into play and searching out Welder. He's going to need that to accelerate as many energy as he can onto this Blissey for turn, he also gets to draw three cards. I think at this point, he does not have very many cards left in this deck. So he can't actually afford to use Salazzle's ability at all. And the game quite literally hinges on Barlow's ability to take this knockout. He needs three heads. And he's flipping horribly. He gets one more. Or is this the reflip? All right, one, two, one for three, two for four, 
Three for five. So he's got his three. And it's a tails. The Whimsicott finally goes down. Barlow able to use Victory Star Victini to force Brady uh, to force uh, a reflip and Brady losing a Whimsicott GX. Really tough here for Brady. He needs to get a Porygon into play so that he can accelerate more energy onto this Whimsicott GX. We see the Vulpix hit the bench. Now, Brady has not used his Toy Box GX yet, so we could see that come into play if he does have an energy. But it looks like all he has is Double Colorless and Triple Acceleration. He's considering whether or not to accelerate to his active or the bench. And I think Brady intelligently decides to just hold his hand. He's got an Alolan Ninetales in his hand right now. So next turn, so long as that Vulpix does not get KO'd, he's going to be able to search out the Porygon Z out of his deck and accelerate these energies wherever he wants. Putting the DC on the bench, Whimsicott is conceding that maybe the active will get KO'd, but I don't really think it matters. Barlow is definitely has Guzma in hand. If he knocks out this active Whimsicott, then he's just a Guzma away from winning. Now we do see Barlow use Rescue Stretcher, shuffling some Chanseys and a Blissey back into his deck making it so that A, he doesn't deck out, B, he might be able to build up a backup Blissey here, which would be very good for him. Should this active Blissey hit the discard pile, and Barlow's hand is just massive. He's going to counter that stadium immediately, has the heat factory, so Brady's attempt to block an attack with a potential uh, Wondrous Labyrinth. Not successful here. Barlow's going to bring back three fire energies from his discard pile with Fire Crystal. And I wonder if he has enough cards left in deck to use the Salazzle ability. Thank you so much, Frazier, for that sub. Three months on board, Tricky Jim. Thank you. Looks like Barlow is going to attach a fire energy to his active. And Joshua Carnell, thank you so much for those bits. 500 bits, top of the leaderboard. You rock, Josh. Thank you so much for tuning in. Pleasure to have you. And Barlow going for... The knockout here gets two heads. Has to decide whether or not to reflip. He's going to go for it. He's got one. One for two. And one for three. So Brady does not block that damage. And is going to sustain 80. Brady finally top decks a Cynthia here. But is going to be able to use Alolan Ninetales GX to get himself that Porygon Z that he has been looking for. Thank you so much, Syntax Error, for that Twitch Prime sub as well. And it looks like Brady not actually going for Porygon Z. is just going to get Field Blower and Fairy Charm ability. I'm not sure why uh, the Fairy Charm ability is coming out, but thank you so much. Natalie for those 115 bits as well. Appreciate it. Going to use the resetting whole Marshadow to bump the Heat Factory. And we got a big Cynthia coming in here. Pretty sure that the Ability Charm only blocks GXs. Yes. Prevent all damage to the Fairy Pokemon this card is attached to from your opponent's Pokemon GX and EX. So I guess technically it will prevent Barlow from being able to score a one-hit KO with the Tapu Lele. But I think that Brady might think that it stops Blissey, which it does not. 
Now, if Brady finds the unit energy or the blend energy here, which he did, then he's going to be able to toy box GX, which I think is his best play right now. Go for the toy box GX and then set up a Porygon potentially, but Brady might have prized his other Porygon, which could be why we don't see it in play right now. So we'll have to see how this turn does unfold. I think Brady is going to opt to go for the toy box, and I think that this is a really heads-up play. If he can get the Porygon into... I don't actually see a Porygon in his deck, and he might not run Rescue Stretcher. I think maybe a Porygon Z already hit the discard pile. So he's going to be able to get five cards out of his deck. Barlow dangerously close to decking out he does have to be careful of that if brady can flip enough heads here throughout the rest of the game then barlow could just lose from deck out which would be pretty ridiculous see brady is pretty low on cards in his deck as well but barlow does have at least one guzma and he could decide to go for that Alolan Ninetales GX, bring him down to one prize remaining. That is a possibility. We see him eyeing up that Guzma in his hand. He could just go for the Whimsicott on the bench as well, but I think that if Barlow does take out a Pokemon, we see him going for the Dedenne here. I think targeting down Dedenne, good choice. Uses his energy attachment for turn. Now Barlow does only need two heads in order to knock out this Dedenne and go to one prize remaining. I'm not sure if Barlow has another Guzma in hand or if he has one in his prizes. I can't quite tell, but this is a big flip with Blissey. Needs two heads. That's not a good start. There's one. Oh, and he misses the first one. He's going to re-roll with the Victini, and he misses again. Oh my gosh, he misses the knockout onto Dene. It only takes 80 damage. What a crazy turn of events here. And now Brady gets to keep his hand from the Toy Box GX that he has. Absolutely stunning here. Brady wasting his potentially only Guzma on a non-knockout, Barlow has got to be feeling this one for sure. Brady is going to retreat into the Whimsicott that is damaged with the blend energy on it, or the unit. And it's just going to use Powerful Slap here. Or not Powerful Slap, but Energy Blow for 40 damage. Slowly ticking away at that Blissey. And it looks like Brady does not have access to that Porygon Z. He must have prized both his Porygon Zs or has one in the discard pile. But Barlow is going to go for a powerful slap again. Hoping for some better luck here. But starting off with double tails. You can bet he is going to want to reflip this one he's got tails again oh my gosh a heads and another head so brady flips heads here it's prevented and he does the whimsicott lives unbelievable whimsicott lives to attack again and he's got the triple acceleration energy three six nine twelve and will be taking the knockout on this Blissey with his Whimsicott. You have to imagine that Brady is looking for the Porygon Z off of those prize cards. He has been missing the Porygon Z. Barlow looking a little bit tilted as he promotes the Victini here, and rightfully so. All of these flips have been going pretty abysmally. We see him promote Victini. He's got a Blissey. He's building up on his bench. He does not have a lot of cards left in deck. That might, be, that might just be a single card left 
in his deck. He has one more Guzma. If he had just knocked out the Dedene, this would be a Guzma for game. But it looks like he has to Guzma up the Dedene and hope to finish off what he tried to uh, finish off what he tried to uh, tried to do just turns ago. Barlow does have a single let loose to try and prevent himself from decking out here. But, I mean, this, this triple acceleration energy is getting discarded at the end of the turn. So I don't even know if Barlow is going to be able to attack with this Blissey again. In fact, he is only left with one card left in deck. So by performing this attack, he's kind of conceding that, yeah, I think this is it. I've got no backup attacker. I need to knock out this one Dedene. And he's got two heads that he needs. So that Dedene is KO'd. And he gets two cards off his prizes. He's going to have to hope that one of those prize cards helps him to not deck out. Looks like Brady is just playing his hand out here. Maybe preparing for a Lily. At this point, I think Brady may just win by deck out. I can't imagine that Barlow has another Guzma in his deck and a way to load up this Blissey with energy to attack. Welder would deck him out at this point. He's only got one card left. So I think Brady's just going to swing for 100. This is the final card in Barlow's deck. And we see a concession. Brady taking the win with Whimsicott GX. Showing off his Porygon Z in the prizes. He was never able to set it up. But Whimsicott moving on to 1-0 here at the Full Grip Games League Tournament at the hands of Brady Botner. We're going to bring him back for an interview to talk about this busted Whimsicott deck. All right, so no Brady, unfortunately. Time was called during the last match. But we do have round two going up now. So I am going to get that match up and rolling. We've got another exciting one. Full Grip Games, very own Matt Price going to be featured in this match. So let's kick it on over to the tournament table because we've got these players starting now. Getting ready for round two of the Full Grip Games League tournament. We've got Full Grip's very own Matt Price on the left, deciding to play in today's league with my Pika Pads list. And I say my Pika Pads because it's they're literally my cards. That's my deck. Matt's playing my deck. Oh yeah, Matt. Well, on the right, we've got Josh Vardos. And thank you so much, Phonic Scream, for that Twitch Prime sub. Welcome aboard. Enjoy all your fancy new emotes. Josh is going to be playing Zap Beasts. So a close match here for sure. Unfortunately for Matt, it looks like he does not have a supporter in his opening hand. So this could be a tough matchup for Matt Price fighting against that fighting weakness. Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX was the most represented tag team Pokemon at the North American International Championships and arguably one of the best decks in format right now. Overpowering and uh, just out-representing Reshiram and Charizard GX, perhaps because Reshizard had too big of a target on its back. Players felt more confident going in with Picaram, and Picaram did end up finishing second at the North American International Championships. Matt going to be showing off his skills here with Pika Ram. 1-0 so far. Josh also 1-0. Josh was saying that he played some version of a Spirit Tomb deck at the North American International Championships. and He wasn't super pleased with how he did, so maybe looking for some redemption points here at the Full Grip Games League Tournament today. These guys are Getting started now. Zara Aura start for Matt, and he 
draws his card for turn, looking for a draw card, and I don't know that he found one, unless that's an Ultra Ball that he's got, which it is. So Matt, gonna be able to pull out of this dead draw with an Ultra Ball of his own for that top deck, a clutch top deck for sure. Matt knows that he's gonna wanna play the Zapdos in this matchup and wants to figure out the best route because putting the Thunder Mountain Prism Star into play could be a little bit sketchy for Matt, but starting in the open hand, you definitely have to consider dropping the Thunder Mountain Prism Star just for the chance that it could help you out on turn two. Though, giving it to your opponent there on the first turn also really tough since they are going to be able to use it on their first turn. I'm sure Josh would definitely love Matt to drop that Thunder Mountain Prism Star now. Not exactly sure what version of Zap Beast that Josh is going to be running, whether or not it plays uh, maybe Fighting and Viridian or if it plays Rainbows and something else. We will have to see. Looks like Matt is going to commit that Lightning Energy to his active Zera Aura. And then we may just see him wait with this hand. And that is what we're going to see here. Matt's actually just going to pass. Thank you so much, Box Punch, for the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you, thank you. Josh is going to go in with Nest Ball here. Now, interesting choice of Matt to pass. And I think that it's, it's fair. He's got a guaranteed knockout on a Zapdos with his own Zapdos and um, with his own Zapdos in the Electro Power and Thunder Mountain Prism Star that he has in his hand right now. So he may just be biding his time for that play. Matt also plays the Jolteon GX in this version of uh, in this version of Picaromp. So Jolteon could be a great option for this deck as well. We see Josh go for his Sledgehammer Buzzwell. He's going to force Matt to try and play around his Sledgehammer turn, which is admittedly pretty tough to do without an early uh, Tag Bolt GX. But we'll see what Josh has in store for this opening turn. I have to imagine that he's got a draw supporter to help him draw some cards. Shuffling up though, so maybe this is going to be a Lily turn. He doesn't go for Jirachi. It's also interesting to note. I think, yeah, he's got a pretty suboptimal Lily here for maybe just four cards. And he gets double Jirachi, double Guzma. So that's definitely an interesting draw there. We see his hand is super clogged up. And he just has to pass. So this is actually a fantastic draw here for Matt. He's got the EV that he could evolve into Jolteon potentially next turn. He's got the Zapdos and the Thunder Mountain Prism Star in his hand. He has to figure out what he wants to Ultra Ball away though. I don't think that any of these options are looking super great. He's got a really good hand. I think that's the reason why he passed that opening turn instead of really doing too much with it. As much as it hurts, I think you definitely have to let go of these energy switches that are in the hand. Ultra Ball away, energy switch, and one more card, and then go for a Dedenne GX. I really think uh, Ultra Balling away Thunder Mountain would be extremely rough. So I hope that he's not going to do that. He is looking at potentially a Guzma play. But I think that using Dedenne to just draw out would be very good. Instead, decides to Ultra Ball away his Thunder Mountain Prism Star and an Electro Power. So really interesting choice here from Matt. And looks like he's just going to get a Let Loose. And not giving Josh that... Thunder Mountain Prism Star. He's going to Guzma up the Jirachi Energy Switch and then let loose to try and draw some more cards. I really like the EV making its way into play. Very good as well. Now, 
This is interesting because without the Jirachi, uh, Josh could have a tough time taking a, a prize here, but I'm sure that we are going to see Josh use one of those Guzmas. Oh no, he's losing those Guzmas. He had multiple Guzma in that hand. But now he may have nothing. So we'll see what he gets off these four cards. And that is a whole lot of nothing for Josh. Matt is going to get a guaranteed Jolteon GX here, which is fantastic for him as well. So Matt's board position looking super strong. And going to take a knockout on that Jirachi. Josh doesn't have a lot going on in this four-card hand off of the Let Loose. So... He's got to figure out a path forward. I mean, no promotion here feels good. I think you have to kind of just toss up the Zapdos and hope for a stellar top deck. Does find an Ultra Ball. He also has a Nest Ball. But Matt was able to pinpoint the weakness in Josh's board position and really played into that well. I think Josh did have two Jirachi in his previous hand, which, I mean, he could have just benched both Jirachis, but opted not to, and is kind of getting punished for that play there because he could have promoted Jirachi after this knockout, but I don't think that he thought that Matt had all of that going on in his hand since he just passed turn one right so definitely an interesting turn of events here josh looking for some action off of this let loose and ideally wants a switch a lightning energy and an electro power so that he can take a knockout on the zapdos but we may see josh fall behind another prize here which would be absolutely devastating for him. Zapdos really wants to get out the gates quickly in this matchup by setting up knockouts, dealing damage. But it looks like Josh just has to pass. Really putting Matt in this driver's seat here. But see, Matt does have a Guzma, so he's going to be able to take another knockout, but that does put Josh on his sledgehammer turn. So Matt really wants to, this is great actually, great play from Matt, realizing that he's gonna be on the sledgehammer turn, going for the Swift Run GX. Fantastic play here, saying if you want a sledgehammer, you are not going to sledgehammer my Jolteon. So great heads up play there from Matt Price at the energy switch. And Josh does find a Guzma. So he's gonna be able to go in on that Zara Aura with Guzma. But at that point, they're still gonna be tied in prizes with Matt on the play, making it so that Matt is still technically up a prize. And since Matt is on his four prize, I believe he's on his four prize turn. I can't really tell. I think he should be on that sledgehammer turn. It's a little bit confusing there. Josh is going to take Guzma. And... Try to play around this Swift Run GX by taking out one of Matt's benched Pokemon. And so far, Matt has been able to take out two Jirachis, which has definitely hurt Josh's board position. Josh is going to be able to Sledgehammer for these two prizes on Zero Aura GX, making it so that Matt does lose his free retreat with Lightning Energy, though Jolteon GX does boast some fancy free retreat itself. 
Matt does have Tapu Koko Prism Star, an Electro Power to take the knockout, and a Dedenne actually has a fantastic hand for himself. The Jolteon GX is going to be able to take a one-hit knockout on that Buzzwool, and then Matt could actually just save this hand and maybe switch energy over to the Tapu Koko GX next turn if he wants to. I mean, really, this hand is is just pretty loaded. He's got everything he wants, and a Dedenne to Dede change and draw six cards if he wants to put that down on the bench. Does become a liability on the bench, though. It is an easier GX Pokemon for Josh to knock out. So that is something that he has to think about for sure. We see him slam down that Electro Power. He knows that he's going to be taking the knockout on this Buzzwell for sure. He has to. And then the question is, does he want to lay down his whole hand in Day-Day Change for six? Or does he want to save that for next turn? It looks like he's just going to save that for next turn. And I don't really mind that at all. Matt actually prized both his Dedenne GX this game, which is pretty astounding. So that is interesting. And if Matt doesn't ever lay down a, a more powerful Pokemon, then Josh is not going to be able to use that uh, Nihilego either. I mean, if, if Matt decides not to put down maybe the Zeraora, the Nihilego, not really going to be doing any significant amount of damage there. We see that Josh is rocking the Nihilego and the Beast Energy in his hand. And Matt is just playing very, very kind of poker face here. You know, keeping his resources in his hand, not going to show anything to Josh, not going to show him any of the tricks that he has up his sleeve. I think that Matt could just go for the old shake and bake this next turn, take a hit with Jolteon, move all the energy over to Tapu Koko GX next turn once the Jolteon takes a hit, force Josh to continue finding Guzmas in order to take knockouts, and then potentially did a change and draw up a new hand. So I like this line here from Matt. It allows him to really make the most of his energy. And we've seen that Matt has actually only played two energy this whole game. He doesn't even have an energy in the discard pile. Matt has been able to go to three prizes remaining, only using two energy, a Zapdos and a Jolteon. That's it. Josh is going to use Stellar Wish, decides to grab an escape board there for his Jirachi. So he's going to be able to get that free retreat. And I don't believe that he has a lightning energy, actually. We see him playing the various rainbow colored energy, Psychic. Uh, he has a beast energy in his hand, but that doesn't power up Zapdos. He desperately needs a lightning energy right now and does not have it. So he's going to force up another Pokemon here. And Matt gladly promotes the Marshadow and is going to use Stellar Wish. Finds a Viridian, so he's going to be able to guarantee himself that lightning energy for Zapdos off of the Viridian Forest. I'm sure Matt would also not mind Viridian because, as we said earlier, he only has two energy in play and has only had two energy in play this whole game. So Matt would definitely love the opportunity to search an energy out of his deck for free. That would be great news for him. Josh still considering this Stellar Wish, though. I think Viridian probably just makes the most sense since he already has the Beast and Nihilego in his hand for the following turn. So just really want to get that Lightning for the Zapdos, take a guaranteed knockout. He could opt for the Lily. I feel like Lily is just a greedier play because... I mean, for many reasons, you could just whiff the attack again. And you just have to continue swinging here. Josh does have four prizes remaining, meaning that he has to knock out a Pokemon GX and maybe two non-GXs or two Pokemon GX in order to close this game out. Matt has been pretty savvy here, not giving Josh a tag team Pokemon to swing into, which is allowed Matt to 
really uh, go toe to toe in this matchup for sure. Giving up a tag team prize in this matchup is pretty, pretty devastating. Josh does use the Viridian here to find the lightning energy that he needs for Zapdos' Thunderous Assault attack. And he's going to select that, playing it down to his Zapdos. And then we'll be taking out Matt's Marshadow. But Matt's hand is absolutely loaded. He has everything that he needs for a significant turn next turn. But we might just see Matt play conservatively again and not offer up any other lower hit point Pokemon. Jolteon does have the highest amount of hit points for a GX, uh, a non-tag team GX Pokemon in Matt's deck. So he may decide to just play very conservatively here. We'll have to see. He finds an Ultra Ball. Hopefully Matt also remembers that he has Viridian at his disposal. Tapu Koko GX, a good option, but does only have 170 hit points. So we see Matt considering just getting rid of it. I think that that's fair. Matt's going to trade away the Dedenne here for probably a Lightning Energy and then Ultra Ball Lightning Energy away. Uh, get it into the discard pile. We know that he does have the Ultra Ball in his hand. He's just going to Ultra Ball those cards away. And I like that. He is going for the Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX, though, which could be absolutely devastating for him because of the incoming potential Nihilego being able to copy that attack. Hopefully, Matt is able to find a Let Loose or something like that in order to soften this blow, but... Matt is going to be going down to two prizes remaining, opening the door for Josh to take. He could take game if he finds, I mean, he'd have to find like a Choice Band and a Guzma, but he could potentially tag bolt Matt's Pikaram here for KO. So I really uh, see a potential Choice Band going on to the Coco. I think Matt just admitting like, yeah, I don't really need the Choice Band. But I think the Choice Band would be better suited on just about anybody else. And then Matt does get an Energy Attachment. He also has a potential Supporter for turn. He has not played a Supporter yet. Tough call here. I think going in with the Jolteon feels the best. And Matt is just going to send that... Uh, that Coco to the Lost Zone. Accelerating the energy in his discard pile is Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX. And then choosing where to attach his energy for turn. He can just headbolt the Zapdos there in the active for knockout with the Jolteon. But Josh has been kind of just lying in wait with this Nihilego Beast energy in his hand. And Matt, I think... Surely does not know that Josh has that up his sleeve, and it's really devastating because with that Pikaram on the bench, it's going to be able to knock out that Jolteon very swiftly. I think that we're going to see Matt probably go for Guzma on the escape board of Jirachi here, which could be interesting to see because that does I guess lessen Josh's outs or a Lily. I actually do like the Lily here as well. And I really hope that Matt doesn't decide to attack with Pikaram here. Josh having not used a GX attack yet uh, would just that would just be game for Pikaram. Thank you so much, Ewok Chief, for the sub. Seven months. Thank you so much for your support. I think Matt here deciding whether or not to headbolt or go into Pikaram. I really hope he doesn't go in with Pikaram. He's already used his GX. No sense putting that thing in harm's way. 
just keep the energy as it is. Uh, if he's played an Electro Power, he could take the knockout with Zapdos, which I actually prefer. I think that that would be the safest Pokemon to the safest Pokemon to attack with would be Zapdos. With Josh being at three prizes and moving to that two prize range here. Oh, and it looks like Matt actually is just going to use Electro Bullet. Didn't exactly see that coming. Uh, that is an interesting play for sure. I mean, wow. That is like some next level mind trickery there. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what play Matt is going for with the Electro Bullet, but I'm going to have to ask him later. But there's one thing for sure. It's that if Matt can play around Nihilego, then I think that he should be in a great spot to win this game. Josh weirdly doesn't have a great play <laughs> with Zapdos remaining alive in the active position. Josh actually might have to... I mean, he can't he can't manually retreat the Zapdos. He actually has like nothing, <laughs> so he's just gonna he's gonna end up having to go for. I mean, he's got maybe Electro Power, maybe Coco, but that's some next level uh, Jedi mind tricks if I've ever seen it. So it's three to three prizes. I mean, maybe Matt is thinking that he can take a multiple prize turn with Electro Bullet. I don't know what he's cooking up here, but I mean, if we did see a two prize turn with Electro Bullet, that would be pretty legendary. And Josh just has to pass. I mean, so Matt insanely read the situation perfectly somehow. But, uh, I mean, I'm clueless as to how he knew, how he knew that that was, uh, that was the maneuver. So, Matt can definitely take a knockout this turn. Uh, he could just soften up the Zapdos. I mean, why not go for it one more time? I mean, we're in at this point, right? Use Viridian, that's fine. I think... At this point, you just are going for the two-prize play with Headbolt. Just let it ride. At this point, you, you need two more Electro Bullets. I mean, a two-prize play with Electro Bullet. You need two more Electro Bullets in order to take a knockout. Might as well just soften somebody up with Electro Bullet right here. I see the third energy going on to the Picaram. I really hope Matt keeps that thing out of harm. Keeps that thing out of harm's way here. I think using Field Blower on the Viridian would be really clutch as well to remove that as an option. Yes, so this is really strong here. And then a Electro Bullet, soften up the benched Zapdos with 60 on it and go for the two prize turn. That would be pretty legendary if that's what we see come out here. Matt's gonna Lily for two. I think he he discarded a Lily with Viridian and then is going to use Lily as his supporter, right? I think, yeah, he's going to Lily for two. And he's already got the Guzman in hand, so just Electro Bullet, soften up the Zapdos, and then Guzma for a double knockout playing around Nihilego. But no, now he goes for the head bolt and opens up the door for Josh to win the game, potentially. Josh needs a Guzman and a Choice Band or Guzman a Shrine. Does not find Guzma or a Switch card. So Matt is in the clear. Josh does not have a Switch in this hand. Unbelievable. He's got nothing. He's actually, he has the Choice Band. If Josh just found Guzma, Josh already has Choice Band in his hand. It's that 
I think it's that alternative art choice band there on the end. And he doesn't find it. All he finds is a shrine. Now Matt is just two knockouts away from winning the game. He can do it by just playing around this Nihilego. Axela Sun, thank you so much for those 100 bits. And I can't wait to potentially get Matt back. I mean, if we could get him for an interview maybe after this match and just be like, bro, did you know how close to death you were <laughs> in this game? Unbelievable. Josh just shaking his head. You can see the frustration in his hands. And he's going to scoop. He doesn't have it. Matt has the win. Oh, my gosh. A crazy turn of events. And Josh showing the sixth card off the top is the Guzma. He had everything he needed to win. And Matt literally reading Nihilego. Matt had, I think Matt had no idea that Nihilego was coming for him. Matt able to take the win. Moving on to 2-0 with Pika Pads at the Full Grip Games League Tournament. That match may have gone to time, but I'm going to see if I can get Matt back for an interview to talk about that exciting game. All right, we got Matt Price here, awesome. hot off his round two win. Matt, a Full Grip mm -hmm. employee. Many of you guys may know him from uh, some tabletop streams mm -hmm. that we've done. So, Matt, uh, you kind of admitted to me that yes. you might have forgot that you Swift ran. I that forgot that I Swift run GX on turn two. Yep. And I really thought I could tag bull to win yep. the game. Yeah, that, that uh, Pika Ron was a huge liability that oh. whole game. Same thing round one. <laughs> did the same thing. Oh, my god. Did gosh. a very similar thing where I benched an extra extra Pika Ron, and it just kind of worked out. I never, was like... Never punished. Real, never punished. Never punished. I was definitely mm -hmm. excited about all of the routes until the Pika Ron <laughs> hit the bench. And then I was like, oh, baby. Right. <laughs> yeah, I feel, like, I feel like I used... All of my my big brain on turns one through three. Yes. And then after that, I I was it's just fizzled. like yeah, it just fizzled away because I, I felt very confident. Yeah. With with you know, my first turn, I felt really good about swift running. And you swift run right on the sledgehammer turns. Right. Perfect. Yes. Uh, you lost the zero aura. That's it fine. Was I had cool. another one in my hand. Yeah, it didn't one. matter. You ended up having. Yeah. And then the turn where you just decided to head bolt and leave all the gas in your hand for the next turn. Right. I thought that was fine. Yes. Because you're like, you force him to hit into the Jolteon. Mm -hmm. Then maybe you could go in with Coco, a fresh right. attacker. Yeah, uh, I, that was a thought. I would just like force him to hit, smack the Jolteon. Then I can set up like a max potion. Coco exactly. Kind of thing exactly. Going on. Actually, like I didn't even realize that both my Dedenne were prized until I just. They just ripped him back to back yeah. off of, like, two guys. Hey, like, there's those fellas. Sure, yeah, they, they were. <laughs> and then the, all right, so tell me about the Electro Bullet play. Because yes, I was like, maybe he's going for some genius 10,000 IQ double prize uh, Electro Bullet knockout. Yeah, so I, ideally I would have hit the Electro Power off of the Lily for four so yeah. I could Electro Bullet for a knockout. And then right. put 30 on a Zapdos. That way I can just attack with the Zapdos into the other Zapdos to knock it out. I don't need right. an Electro Power. Yeah. So that was kind of the thought. Also, like, it just kind of strands him. Like, he's just sitting there with the Zapdos in the active, and now he has to find a way to get it out of the active. So if he burns a switch doing that, then he has to spend a Stellar Wish. You know, if he doesn't hit it off the first Stellar Wish, he has to get a switch off of it, you know, force him to use it. It was out. quite the call. Yeah. You were basically like, you ain't got a switch in that hand. And he I was, was like, <laughs> and he was like, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> that I was just, it. Yeah, that was it. I was just like, man, this guy, Josh will have a switch. He won't, yeah. he won't have it like that. And he didn't. I think, I think in hindsight, it was a little worse because it did set up, get two, like a lightning in his discard pile for a Coco later on. Um, but, uh, it seemed fine at the Sometimes time. you just don't yeah. get punished. It just seemed okay at the time. Yeah. I, mean, I wasn't too worried. Anyways, it was exciting yeah. to see you on stream. What did you win against round one? I played against uh, the Mal Malamar deck. Oh, and how'd that go? Uh, it was close. He's like, just couldn't set up very quickly. It was Jesse. Jesse couldn't, he just couldn't ah. set up very quickly. I got a little greedy on turn one and like kind of co-coed onto two Pika Roms, and then I realized that, you know, <laughs> on the board. I mean, they could really win the game very quickly. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely, I think the Jolteon is nuts. He's the that best card That card seems deck. insane. He's the best like, card Like, the whole time deck. during, during against Jesse, against Malamar, I was like, man, I just want a Jolteon. 
For sure. Jolteon can just he can just he can just one electro power knock out a Giratina. He can knock out Malamar, Swift Run. Swift Run's insane. It's the reason he's in the deck. Yeah. Is because it's the new best GX attack yeah. in the deck. I think because that, yeah. Tag Bolt is not as good with everybody playing Mew. Right. So Swift Run is where you want to be. Right. I think I think that yeah. card is insane. I think that card for is really sure. good. Really for like sure, it. for sure. Yeah. All right, Thank man. You. Well, congrats on 2-0, and yeah. good luck in your third round. Thank you. Thank you for letting me borrow the deck. Of course, of <laughs> course. Round three, we've got Brady Bodner back with his Whimsicott GX deck versus Christian Johnson with his Venusaur deck. Venusaur is a card that saw a lot of play before the release of Unbroken Bonds, but ever since Rush Ram and Charizard hit the field, Venusaur has receded into the background. But with very few Rush Ram and Charizard GX decks showing up the North American International Championships, Venusaur is a card that could see some play again. And Christian showing us that he can go 2-0 at the Full Grip League Tournament with Venusaur. Here against Brady's Whimsicott deck, unlikely 2-0 decks. I'm really excited about this game. Brady is going to look to get as many energy quickly onto his Whimsicott GX as he can so that he can take big one-hit knockouts on Christian's Venusaur and Celebi Tag Team GXs. Christian is going to look to just deny, deny, deny. Hopefully get the Porygon out of the equation so that he can just heal and heal and heal and keep that Venusaur slugging away. Also going to be wanting Brady to flip as many tails as possible on that fluffy cotton ability. However, we saw in round one, that was simply not the case. Brady going to be going first again. Top decks a nest ball. Perfect for him to set up a Porygon. Brady does go forth confidently, knowing that this Cottony is not going to get KO'd on the first turn of the game against that Celebi and Venusaur tag team GX. Celebi and Venusaur starts attacking as early as turn two with a Grass Energy and a Double Colorless. Looks like Brady also has an Ultra Ball. And he is going to Ultra Ball away a Lightning Charm and a Triple Acceleration Energy. And he may go for a Vulpix here. Actually, just Tapu Lele GX and a Lily. So he's going to get a big Lily draw here. Brady ditching one of the Triple Acceleration Energies. He doesn't actually need too many of those. I mean, it is a 270 hit point Behemoth Tag Team Pokemon GX, which is a lot. But he should be able to get, as we see here, his DCEs, his unit energies, rainbow energies, to all stick. If this list that Brady is playing is anything like um, anything the list like the list that I was playing before, then he played four double colorless and four triple acceleration energy, so plenty of energy to go around. Brady does have the Alola Ninetales GX in his hand, so he's going to grab the Vulpix here, which could be the key ingredients for an explosive turn two, which would definitely be exciting. And Brady eyeing up his hand one last time, going to go for a pass. Christian drawing for turn. He's got a Shaman down onto his bench and an Aether making it more difficult for Brady to take that quick knockout, requiring Brady to deal 300 damage effectively to get through this thick wall of a Venusaur. Christian's going to Lily, filling his hand up to eight cards. And at this point, he's accomplished all he needs to for this first turn of the game. The field is set. Let's see what Brady can do. He's got a Lola Ninetales GX using the ability. I think it is. Is it Mysterious Guidance? Is that, is that the name of the ability on a Lola Ninetales GX? Lola Ninetales, you can hear the clicking on my keyboard. It's Mysterious Guidance. 
That's what's up. All right. Use a mysterious guidance to search out two item cards out of his deck and put them into his hand. We can expect him to get maybe a rare candy and a timer ball here, something like that in order to set up his Porygon. He may also go for an Ultra Ball so that he can get a Detene GX. Looks like he's actually just grabbing more basic Pokemon. He's gonna get a Nest Ball and we'll see what else he has in this hand of his. I don't actually know what he's got going on may already have the cards he needs for Porygon. Just going for two Nest Balls, wow. And we see him scanning through the deck. I do see Porygon. So I actually just have no idea what he's going for here. It's gonna set up his Cottony and his Porygon. Maybe he's already got Rare Candy Porygon in his hand. That would be pretty exciting. He's got the Whimsicott, an Energy, Wondrous Labyrinth, and Fairy Charm ability going on to his Alolan Ninetales. And I guess Brady's just going to Cynthia. So Brady opting not to get the Rare Candy Ultra Ball there to set up Porygon Z. And instead, going to just try to draw into it with this Cynthia and launching a guaranteed attack here. Not leaving room on his bench for, oh, Natalie giving us some clues in the chat. Brady prized his other three Ultra Balls. That makes this play make a lot more sense. Thank you, Natalie, for the heads up. Brady prized three Ultra Balls this game. Was not able to go for the Rare Candy Porygon play off of the Alola Ninetales because of his prizes. Crazy stuff, so he's just going to Uses Toy Box GX. I actually really like this play from Brady. Going for Toy Box here, saying if Christian doesn't have a judge, then Brady is going to forcibly set up this Porygon Z and then throw a ton of energy into play, potentially enough to KO this Celebi and Venusaur Tag Team GX. So good heads up play here from Brady. Christian only has a 50% chance of being able to connect with this Whimsicott GX in the first place. And if he does, Brady can actually just retreat the Whimsicott GX out of confusion and special conditions. And that would be pretty ideal play there. Christian's going to take a moment to read Whimsicott GX, make sure he understands the fluffy cotton ability and the power of it. Christian eyeing up his hand now is going to go for his draw for turn after he makes sure he understands Wondrous Labyrinth as well. Not cards that we see in every play. I don't think Christian drew for turn, so that might. Uh, going to type that in the chat. I don't think Christian drew for turn. Pretty sure he needs to draw for turn, so yeah. He did not draw for turn. I don't remember him doing that, but okay. I don't remember him drawing for turn, but that's fine. Natalie is saying that he did draw for turn, so that's that's okay with me. And then Whimsicott is going to sustain some damage here from that Celebi and Venusaur Tag Team GX. You guys can watch back. Apparently the player is saying that he did draw a card for turn. I am pretty sure that he did not. So that's, uh, I mean, I guess we'll have to go back and watch the tape. But anyways, we're just going to play on from here. Pretty sure he did not draw a turn, uh, draw his card for a turn. But Celebi and Venusaur launching Pollen Hazard. It's going to burn, poison, and confuse Brady's active Whimsicott GX. However, Brady now has the power of his Toy Box GX and the ability to throw as many of these energy cards into play as he wants, thanks to Porygon Z 
and that crazy code ability. We see him stacking energy on that Whimsicott. He's got 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. That's a knockout on the Celebi and Venusaur. This Celebi and Venusaur is biting the dust. Toy Box GX sticking this turn, and we've got a huge Whimsicott energy blow already dealing 270 damage. This is going to be a gigantic knockout this turn. So hold tight. I don't know if Christian's going to be able to respond to what this Whimsicott is cooking here. Toy Box coming in absolutely clutch. Now all Brady needs is to be able to find some more energy next turn once these triple acceleration energies hit the discard pile. But Brady's going to be up three prizes, and Christian's going to have no energy in play, so I don't think Brady terribly minds. He's like, this is fine. And that's a knockout. 270 damage. Whimsicott GX, everybody. Taking a huge bite out of those prize cards. Absolutely insane. Now Christian left with a single Shaman in play. That is not quite going to get the job done. He's got to start setting up a second Celebi and Venusaur Tag Team GX Pronto. And now he's got the judge. Oh, how terrible is this? If he had judged last turn, the Toy Box GX would have never stuck. But this judge is coming a little bit too little too late for Christian, unfortunately. Not able to limit Brady last turn where it really mattered. Both players are going to be limited to just four cards. And Christian needs a lot off these four cards. He needs a Celebi and Venusaur Tag Team GX and a Grass Energy in order to not just lose. But instead, he's just got Shamans galore. Two Shamans. Brady has got to be excited about this. He had just two Shamans in play. He can easily just continue slugging away with this Whimsicott GX. He is going to go down to two prizes remaining. Christian using Bill's analysis, hoping to get a Venusaur going. And he finds an Acro Bike and hopefully a Nest Ball. Just an Acro Bike. That's it. This is devastating. Christian needs... A Venusaur off this Acro Bike at the very, very least. If it's not a Pokemon, I think he's probably out of luck. And he finds two Judge Whistles. Okay. He could Judge Whistle to draw a card. And we'll see if that's a Pokemon. If not, it's going to be game. And we see Brady just attack, and that's it. Brady taking the win, moving on to 3-0. With his Whimsicott GX deck, we saw Toy Box GX draw Brady five cards of choice out of his deck, setting up for the perfect energy blow on Celebi and Venusaur tag team. Brady moving on to 3-0 undefeated with Whimsicott at the Full Grip Games League Tournament. We've got Brady here. Hello. On a heck of a Whimsicott run. Yeah. <laughs> All right, talk to us about your Whimsicott deck here, Brady. Um, you know, you just got to flip a lot of heads, and <laughs> that's what you do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, being able to do 280 damage is not, not something a whole lot of decks can do. <laughs> no. No. In fact, we were testing Whimsicott. It's on the chat. We were testing Whimsicott. Uh, when the card first came out, we yeah. thought the deck was, like, invincible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, bro, turn two, 280, like. Oh, whatever. Right, yeah. You know? <laughs> and we did, I mean, we saw you toy box and then just like, you know, yep. <laughs> knock his socks off there. <laughs> so yeah, the chat went wild. That yeah. was uh, that was very exciting. Mm. So round one, playing against, what did you play against round one? Uh, Blissey. Blissey on stream. Walk us through that against Barlow a little bit. Oh, uh, well, I just like looked at his deck and I was like, there's only a few cards in there. He's not going to 
dig for anything, and <laughs> you just, I just kept flipping heads and decked them out. <laughs> you saw the writing on the wall. You're yeah. like, I don't even need to win this yeah. game. I just need to not lose, <laughs> you know, before he decks out. So, yeah, yeah he had gassed his deck out of resources completely, right. had some very unfortunate flips. Yeah. Going for the uh, going for the Dedenne GX on the bench and then failing with the yeah. game. <laughs> <laughs> if he literally just hits that with the victory star of Victini as well. And he failed both times. Mm -hmm. If he just hits that for knockout, he has the other goose at his deck. He could yeah. just take out a poor god or right, something. Right. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. So that was a that was a wrap. Tell us about game two that we didn't get to see on camera. Uh, game two I played against Picaron. And then we both we both kind of just sat there doing nothing for like five turns. And then uh, and then I found a lightning charm and then he did even more nothing. <laughs> <laughs> So that's yeah. kind of hilarious. Yeah. All right, so you played against Picaram, got yeah. Lightning Charm, Profit, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then Game Three there. That was uh, that was pretty wild. So yeah. what was uh, what was the game plan against that? I saw you prize like three Ultra Ball. Yeah, I did. Yeah, <laughs> no. I was very that's... confused about the Alolan Nine Tails for two Nest Balls. Yeah. I was like, this man. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, uh, I looked at my discard pile, and I was like, there's one Ultra Ball in there. I'm sure there's one in the deck. <laughs> there was not. <laughs> it's like, typically, you want to use a little Nine Tails to yeah. set up Porygon. Yeah. However, Brady is going a different route. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, whole, the game plan was just be able to knock out one Cell Sword and hope he couldn't respond, because it takes at least two turns for him to get going. So Exactly. Yeah. So he kind of gassed everything out. Two yep. triple accelerations didn't matter because he had nothing to respond. Right. And then the judge, the turn after the toy box, is like, dang, dude, yeah. man, <laughs> if you just got that the turn before, right. like, who knows how this game goes. Yep. But uh, that's a wrap. Do you know what uh, Kendall is playing in his deck by any uh, chance? I'm not sure. Not sure no. either, but sounds like uh, we're probably going to be getting you on stream again. So, All right. <laughs> how did uh, how did well we got you here though? What's up, Zaysher? That always scares me a little bit. Yeah, it scared me. Very yeah. loud. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Zaysher, for that sub four months. Appreciate it. Tell us a little bit about how NAIC went for you. Um, I played stall. Okay. And uh, round one, I played Zapis and beat it because that's a pretty free matchup. Sick. Game two, round two, I played against Reshazard and beat it because I played Kiram and Bronzong, and like started two zero. Yeah. Um. Then round three, I like threw a game super hard against a Reshazard player, uh, and then game two, I got let loose out of it, and then uh, uh, and then I got and then I got paired against two like auto losses after that. I played no. against uh, a stall mirror, but he was playing Giraffe Rig and Judge. And then uh, Lost March. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Lost March is not good, no. dude. Yeah. I, I won game two. I was a turn away from winning game three. Oh, my, my god! I just, uh, all I did was take prizes with Buzzmosa. I just oh. took six prizes with him game two. Dang. So you just went Beast Ring, Beast Ring? You no, no, no. I, I didn't play Beast Ring. It was just Beast Energy and Rainbow Energy. Oh. So I was just jet punching, jet punch, jet oh. punch. Oh. Yeah. And then, okay, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. And yep. attacking, attacking stall deck. Yeah. Very creative. So uh, we'll be seeing you, I think, next round. Good luck, huh? and thank you for joining us for the uh, interview. Thank you. The fourth and final round of the Full Grip Games League Tournament is underway. We've got Matt Price, who is sitting at 2-1 against Kendall, who is 3-0, and I believe his first time 3-0 at the league tournament. So big congrats to Kendall. I think this is also his first time on stream with us. So excited to have Kendall here on camera. Matt playing Picaram. Not sure what Kendall is bringing to the table. I know that uh, his dad has made it on stream before at our league with Picaram, but Kendall usually likes to build his own decks, bring something spicy to the table. Looks like it is something involving fire. So maybe a Rush Ram and Charizard Tag Team GX or Maybe a Blacephalon, Baby Clowns deck, something like that. These guys are getting going now, and it looks like Matt Price is going to be going first. Kendall starting a Rush Ram and Charizard GX. So Matt is going to have the ball in his court, able to decide how to proceed here. Going first, definitely a favorable outcome in this matchup want to go first in this match. It can play out very much like a mirror match. Now, Matt does have a lot of resources in this opening hand, as well as an electromagnetic radar. So I don't think that he really wants to get rid of this hand with a 
day day change but he may just have to here he also has a nest ball so he's going to be able to get a pokemon there and he's going to ditch the max potion and maybe an ultra ball or a looks like potentially the ultra ball i think if you get the mac you know if you get the electromagnetic you probably don't need the ultra ball you can get a dedene and just kind of say you know what i'm gonna day day change this turn so that's fine and then he's got the nest ball he can go get his coco prism star or what have you out of the deck too and then leaving the Mar Shadow in the active is really strong here because if Kendall gets a turn one attack with maybe Double Blaze GX, though I doubt he would want to, but um, if he does, then the Mar Shadow goes down. So I think that that's probably going to be what Matt wants to do here. I also think that if the Tapu Koko Prism Star is in the deck, then he is going to want to maybe day day change this energy away but i don't see the coco prism star coming down from matt yet just going straight for the zapdos so we may actually see him go for a more conservative just attachment to the zapdos from hand we see matt also knows he's going to bench that zero aura here he may just pass, but I mean, I think he, sh he at least needs to attach an energy for sure. And we see him not wanting to day-day change away that um, that electro power. I think he kind of just needs to do that, though, and just see some more cards. This is a very explosive match, and getting rid of the... Uh, getting rid of the one Electro Power is not going to lose you the game. So, we are seeing Matt kind of mull over that decision, though. And I think that's fair. Saving the Electro Power, definitely good. But we'll see what he's got uh, in store for us. He is just going to ditch it. And I agree with that play. Just see some more cards. Give yourself more options. Uh, in this hand that he got himself into off of the Day Day Change is really strong. He can go Ultra Ball, get rid of two Lightning Energies, and then maybe Let Loose, uh, which is extremely good, limiting Kendall to just four cards on the first turn of the game, and then also giving Matt some additional draw options as well. And if Matt is able to find a Lily off of that Let Loose, he's going to get a very explosive refilling to eight on the first turn of the game um did matt find anything on that yeah i was gonna say he has to find the let loose first yep and matt is gonna find the let loose marsh shadow attach the choice band and then let loose shuffling both players up to four cards kendall being limited to only four on the first turn of the game let loose is the most defining card in this format, deciding games left and right. We saw it decide the finals as well with M. Taylor. Uh, the finals of the North American International Championships with M. Taylor let loosing himself into a pretty garbage hand. And Matt getting an excellent draw off that let loose, finding himself with Cynthia and the Coco Prism Star. So he can throw more energy into play with the Coco Prism Star, and then Cynthia refilling his hand to six, which would be fantastic there. And he has not played his supporter yet. So I think that that would be a great play from him. He is going to bench the Coco, probably just throw that energy into play, and Cynthia, or just Cynthia, could be fine either way. Got to play that Cynthia just to give yourself the most explosive draw possible. He's considering whether or not to bench the Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX, I think. Is that too much of a liability for him? You know? It looks like he is going to Dance of the Ancients. I like this from Matt. Just get that energy onto the Zapdos and Zero Aura. Then, do you bench the Picarom before the Cynthia... That is also a big consideration. 
going to put the energy on Zero Aura, and looks like Dedene. That's pretty interesting there. And he also has the Thunder Mountain. So he is considering it, but it looks like he does not put down the Thunder Mountain, does not bench the Picaram either, which I think is totally fine there from Matt. And we're just seeing exactly how much of this deck Matt is burning through on the first turn of the game. Absolutely ridiculous. All of his draw outs have been exhausted. He is let loose, he has used Day Day Change, and he is Cynthia. Seen an absolute ridiculous amount of this deck. And Kendall is left with just a lone Charizard. Uh, not a lone Charizard, a Charizard and another Charizard, and a Volcanion. But no way to switch that Volcanion into the active position. So he is just left having to manually attach to this Charizard and then pass. That is a devastating let loose from Matt Price. And the ball is back in his court. We're seeing that let loose put in a ton of work here. Matt is gonna have an option to hit this Charizard big, but he doesn't want to hit it with a GX Pokemon or he could suffer from an outrage attack. So we're gonna see him go for an order pad here. If he can get a energy switch out of the deck. He's going to be able to attack with Zapdos, but that's double tails on order pad. That's pretty brutal here. And we're seeing that Matt is uh, a little bit getting punished for not using Tapu uh, Coco Prism Star onto the Zapdos here. He could just go for Guzma though. He does have Guzma in his hand, but it looks like he is just going to Ultra Ball the hand down instead. Perhaps grab a Coco GX. He could hit the Charizard for 130 with Sky High Claws. Instead, it looks like he's just going to get a Zero Aura, thin the deck, and then Lily for six, looking for an energy switch, which would allow him to attack with Zapdos. And I'm sure that's the target that he wants to go with this turn. Forcing Kendall to have to outrage Zapdos for knockout, and then Matt should be able to clean up shop with Zeraora. So I don't believe I see an energy switch there, and Matt decided to bench his, oh, he does have energy switch. It's a green one, there it is. I get those mixed up. The green energy switches I don't see very often, but does have the green energy switch which I should know because it's in my deck, but you know, oh well, oh well. This is a really risky play. I don't know if Matt has read Outrage, but he's about to hit this thing. Oh, I am, I am just very, very upset. <laughs> he's about to hit this thing for 160 damage and then Charizard will just Outrage for knockout. Oh, Matt. It's okay. Matt, unfortunately, doesn't get to play a lot. So he is just kind of uh, learning as he goes here. And I think the Zapdos would have just been an, a much safer choice. And you guys know Will Ferrell and Anchorman, and he's like, milk was a bad choice. It's kind of how I feel about Zero Aura. Zero Aura was a bad choice. And Kendall has got to be like, well, thank you, Matt. You're giving me the option to outrage for knockout and take two prizes feels pretty good. And that is a, uh, Kendall's got no other cards in his hand. He's just going to outrage. So we'll see what Matt can cook up this turn. He does have the Zapdos on the bench, which can deal 110 damage. That Reshiram Charizard does have 160 on it. So 160 plus 110, that is 270 for the knockout. I would just feel much more confident about Matt's board position had he you know, maybe gone with the Zero Aura second instead of first, but that's okay. Um, you know, you could have swung with the Zapdos and then maybe gone back up with Zero Aura. But it's all good. Matt is going to secure three prizes here with 
the Thunderous Assault attack, and then can potentially use the Tapu Koko GX to deal huge damage to a second Reshiram Charizard. If Kendall can get one going, it looks like he does have Power Plant in his hand, so he's going to be able to stop all Pokemon GX abilities and then just manually attach to his Reshiram Charizard and again has to pass. Now, Matt does not have Free Retreat with Zero Aura. Highly unfortunate because of the Power Plant, also not able to use Tapu Koko. Matt does have a Field Blower in his hand, though, so he is going to be able to rely on that to turn his abilities back on. See Matt attaching to his Zero Aura, potentially. He's got a lot of options to consider here. I think you just Field Blower the Power Plant, Coco GX to Arrow Trail, bring two energies onto Coco GX, and then retreat into Zapdos and hit for 110. I think if you do that, you put yourself in an extremely favorable situation. And you've got the Coco GX just sitting in wait on the bench, able to crank out a big hit. You know Kendall probably doesn't have any Guzma or anything like that. That is the kind of, I think, the optimal play for Matt here. But it is a little bit of a, uh, it is a little bit of a, kind of a zigzag route though. So he might not be thinking uh, about this play, but we'll see, we'll see what he does. He has to feel blower this power plant for sure and get this out of the equation. He has the feel blower already. So I don't think that there's anything else worth saving it for and using the Coco GX to bring the Zapdos back to the bench, allowing it to safely use Thunder's Assault again, will soften up the Rush Ram Charizard just enough so that any of his attackers can really finish it off. And we see him keep reaching for the Field Blower. I think he's just going to hit it for 40. Now, with that 40 damage hit, that is ultimately kind of a safe play, but... I think Matt doesn't want to uh, doesn't want to maybe waste his resources. And wow, Kendall does not find a welder. I was gonna say this Zapdos would just get knocked out if Kendall could find a welder, but he can't. Instead, he's just got Acerola. He's gonna have to potentially just pick up this Rush Ram Charizard and start using Volcanion. I think that that would put him in a pretty decent situation. I mean, better than kind of where he's at, I think. But it looks like he's going to wait one more turn to maybe Ace Rolla for a bigger hit. He's going to swing for 70, though. If Matt can find all the sauce he needs to deal 230 damage, if he can attack with Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX, then he's going to be able to Tag Bolt with a Choice Band for game, which... Would be it. I mean, Matt already knocked out one Rush Ram Charizard. Taking the second one out would definitely shore things up, but Matt does not have an energy switch in his hand, so that is kind of a tough call to make. I think Ultra Balling for a Picaram, maybe attaching an energy to it, is probably fine and would put him in a pretty decent spot. And then just use a Cynthia in his hand to shuffle and draw six, just saying, you know what, it's cool. Like, Field Blower, the Power Plant, and then just start to load up the cards you need to win the game. I think you could even still, this turn, just do the same, uh, you know, Field Blower, play, get rid of the Power Plant, and then uh, go in with the Coco GX, Arrow Trail, and then retreat to Zapdos if you don't get all the buffs you need in order to take the KO here. I don't think that, I don't think he's gonna be able to get all those buffs, uh, especially on a Coco GX, but you know, just hitting it with Zapdos, probably fine. Uh, he does know that, um, that Kendall does have the Acerola in his hand though, so hitting the Reshiram Charizard for any significant amount of damage isn't really going to do anything. 
TCG Scrubs, thank you so much for the kind words. Two months sub to Tricky Jim. Love the content and love the service from Full Grip. Keep up the good work. I will continue doing my thing. Thank you so much, TCG Scrub. And it looks like Matt is counting his deck. And considering his path forward here, I could just poke away at the Restoram Charizard again, attach another energy to his Zara Aura and go from there. Kendall really has nothing. There's almost, you know, no way for Matt to uh, for Matt to throw this one. He just needs to continue attaching his energy and slugging away at the Rush Ram Charizard. That would pretty much do it. Looks like Matt is going to attach a second energy to that Zero Aura. Choice Band as well. Field Blower, the Power Plant, and just go in. I think with the Cynthia is probably the safest. That or he could Day-Day change. And, yep, we're going to see a Day-Day change. Getting rid of the, wow, Matt just has a lot there. Order up. That's a Tails. Three, 0 for 3 on those. I think he's at 190 right now, and he's got double Electro Powers. 190 plus 60. That If he had an energy switch, then he would be able to knock this thing out or the Thunder Mountain Prism Star. Instead, he just pokes again. So he is just one card off. He needed the energy switch, and he would have had game with his Zara Aura. But that tails on the order pad, not a lot, not allotting him the energy switch he needed to pull off the attack with Zara Aura GX. So the ball is back in Kendall's court. It looks like Kendall is going to go for an Eevee with his nest ball. Throwing that onto his bench. Looks like Kendall is playing. Kendall is uh, playing the Flareon GX. And Riley points out in the chat that he has enough gas in his hand to even attack this Reshram Charizard for knockout with Zapdos. I believe he has all three Electro Powers in that hand. So he's going to be able to, you know, to deal 200 damage with Zapdos, but... Kendall does have Acerola in his hand. So we could probably expect a Acerola and then maybe an attack with this Flareon GX incoming to knock out the Zapdos. That's a possibility. It looks like Kendall is considering his energy placement for turn. Who would hope that he uses the Acerola this turn knowing that the Reshiram Charizard is really, really close to getting KO'd. Looks like he's actually not going to energy evolution. And just take the knockout. Not using Acerola there. Really tough. And Matt is going to be able to, sure enough, next card's energy switch. Matt is going to be able to take this knockout with all of those electro powers in his hand. And I think he's just, uh, yep, doing the math. That's actually just a clean knockout. I mean, that Rush Ram Charizard could have had no damage on it, and Matt would have taken a one-hit KO on it, dealing 280 damage. And Kendall showing that the Flareon not in the deck. Matt moving on to 3-1 with Pika Pads. And uh, that, uh, that was a pretty exciting finale there. Round four of the Full Grip Games League Tournament. I'll have to catch up with Brady as well to see how he finished up in his final round. Matt moving on to 4-0 at the Full Grip Game. Not 4-0, 3-1. Matt moving on to 3-1, the Full Grip Games League Tournament. I'll catch up with Brady, see how Brady did as well. Make sure to stay tuned for those final interviews. And then we're going to have Riley uh, doing, I was going to say, JW, I think, is on his honeymoon, right? So JW is not going to be doing tag team, but Riley is going to be streaming. So we're going to pitch this stream over to Riley with the uh, with the raid here momentarily. But sit tight, and we'll get uh, Matt Price and maybe Brady to talk about their runs here, the Fulgrip Games League Tournament. Be right back. Matt 
Three one. <laughs> yes. Hey, congrats! How Thank did you, you like your time with uh, Pika Pets? I liked that deck a lot. Isn't it fun? I played it very poorly. Oh, that's okay. For three out of four <laughs> games. That's a- and then I got my Eevee got dogged. Oh, in round three, I opened uh, four Lightning Eevee Jolteon Choice Band. <laughs> <laughs> the EV and yeah. the Jolt. Yeah, and then I were in like some other dead card, and then I top decked a lightning energy, and then yeah, I, just, just, I just quick drawed, and I didn't even flip heads on the quick draw. Oh, that's just insult yeah. injury right there. So yeah, in that mm-hmm. in that final game, we could we could see the gears turning. Right, you know? you're a little you know a little out of practice. That's okay. I yes, I'm extremely out of practice. I've never felt more out of practice in my life. <laughs> to be and then not only are you out of practice. Uh, but then on camera, too. I know. It's like you can't even just didn't sit even help. amongst friends and just like <laughs> talk about plays. Right. No. Well, I, knew, I figured, so I, I think that I had a better turn one play than what I did, but I think it was okay, and I, and I definitely just forgot that I didn't play a supporter on that day they change. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I was really debating. I didn't like it because I didn't want to get rid of the Coco. Uh-huh. So I could, you know, at some point Coco a Charizard. Right. But... If I just hit two Electro Power and an Energy Switch or a Thunder Mountain, I just won't It was game it. over, yeah. right. So I didn't mind it. I was like, all right, he's going for win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fine. Right. And then the order, if you hit the order, I, I just, just would have won. I, I think mean, I got over three. I oh. got extremely <laughs> tilted by flipping tails on that order pad that I just forgot that I hadn't played a supporter for a turn. Uh huh. I just, it just come, I was just like, I just lose the game. I don't see how I can win. Because I'm going to, I'm going to hit into this Charizard. He's going to ace roll the Charizard. And right. I'm just, you know, I'm never gonna take three prizes again. The big question mark for me mm-hmm. was uh, was going in with the Zero Aura first mm-hmm. instead of the Zapdos first. I, I think, did you know about Outrage? I did know about Outrage. Okay. I don't think I really cared because if I go in with the Zero Aura first, that leaves me a play where I can um, tingly return for a knockout on a Charizard. Oh, right? you could, yeah. Yes, and so that lets me pick up something, throw up something I don't want or I don't care right. about throughout the Zapdos. And it also gives me the option to knock out with the Zapdos as well. So it gives me it gives me two more options instead of just, you know, because then I would be forced to go in with the Zero Aura. And if you had drawn something and you had gotten, like, another Charizard or something, you'd gotten something big, a big turn going, I think I just, I think that would have been, you know, hard to deal with. The other uh, mm-hmm. the other thing I was considering on the turn where you, uh, where you just, you hit him for 40, I think, Mm-hmm. Uh, just hit him for 40 yeah. that turn. Uh, you could have gone Field Blower and then, like, burned your Coco GX just to bring him into the active mm-hmm. and then just retreated into Zapdos and swung for one ton again. Which could is like have. a little yeah. shake and bake move. And a little bit. You have your Zero Aura out, which is kind of strange. Right, and I wanted to leave the... I guess I wanted to leave the Coco in my hand as a threat just to be like, all right, it's there. Right. You know, if I can get a big knockout with it. Because, like, he had the Acerola, or I didn't know right. that. But, you didn't you know, know that, yeah. But... You know, say I swing in with the Zapdos for 110 and he does, like, Acerola or play a Mixter or play the Milk right. Tank, you know, and gets rid of the energy, then it's just like, well, you know. Hey, cards are kind of on the table right. at that point. If, yeah, I, just, if right I just hit him for there. 40, yeah. it gives him less incentive to play those cards. That's true. You know, that's that was the thought process. I don't know if it was right, but that was the thought process. Yeah, it makes right? sense. I I like, I've noticed that your, your play, usually mm-hmm. you played more conservative. Yes. You were like, uh, I don't need to play these cards, so I'm not. Right. And that that's right. it's there's nothing wrong with that because mm-hmm. it does uh, it creates a different dynamic when you're commentating mm-hmm. over it. It's just uh, I'm, I'm forcing my opponent to to do something. Right. I'm, I'm Very saying, reactive. Player, I'm saying yeah. that I am confident in the cards in my hand. Yeah. And I'm going to do this play, and you have to do something for it. sure. So it was uh, it was definitely interesting, mm-hmm. and it was uh, it was kind of refreshing yeah. to watch a different take on on just playing Thank the you. game in general. Yeah. So. Very cool mm-hmm. there. Three one. Yes. Are you thinking uh, you're gonna finish in the top four then? So oh maybe. maybe. Maybe if Brady loses. Uh, they got paired up. Kendall was a three zero. Yeah, there you go. So, so he took out a three zero. Yeah. And then if Brady loses, then we're gonna be a bunch of three ones out here. There we go. And yes. then hopefully I am I am uh, one of the better ones with the superior <laughs> resistance. So mm-hmm. all in all, uh, are you uh, are you, are you excited? That the format feels fun or is um, it okay? I think I think this last standard has been fun. Mm-hmm. I think it's been okay. It was it's definitely better than than the standard format like last year's deck. I hated that standard. Oh yeah, uh, that standard was. It was I didn't awful. like it either. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, like this it. one feels it feels fresh. It feels diverse. It feels like you know yeah. there are five good decks. And Probably then, yeah. Like like five, and they all just fight for jockeying for position in that in those top three spots, and you have five decks fighting for that, and then you yeah. just kind of 
you know, and it feels it feels good. I like. That. I kind of like the tag teams, you mm-hmm. know, that kind of high risk, high reward. Mm-hmm. It definitely, uh, you know, it makes you it makes you consider your play. But then, like the I think the let loose, I'm fine with him getting out of the. Oh, play. for sure, Get he that can guy he out. can leave. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, makes the, card, he makes the tag teams not. a little too degenerate. I think because then you're just mm-hmm. like load all your energy on a big boy yeah. and then limit you to four. I think. Yeah, we saw what you did. Okay. To, we saw what you did to Kendall. Right. I mean, did you let loose him turn one? I no. I hmm. did. You did. I did. Yeah, you did. Yes, you let I did. I changed track. and and let loose him. You did. Yes. You let loose him to garbage. Yes. Oh yeah. I think that card is extremely <laughs> unfair. <laughs> I don't like unfair cards. It is. It is. Like uh, you know, judge is judge is a is a fair version of that card. For sure. You know. So I think uh, the format's definitely headed in a right. good direction, and I'm excited to see what worlds bring for us. I think that's going to be. I don't know what the what the thing. Me that. neither. I don't know. I guess I, I like. I don't know. I'm holding out to see exactly the exact English set list of Unified Minds. For sure, for sure. Because sometimes they like to throw reprints. Yes. In, the, in there, you know, it's just kind of. Speaking of Unified Minds, mm-hmm. you could support our place of employment, FullGripGames.com. Yes. Well, yeah, we got that for pre-order on the website now. For sure. That's oh yes, awesome. yeah. lost it. Anyways, <laughs> congrats on three one, Matt. Thank you. And uh, mm-hmm. yes, and it was a pleasure to have you on stream. Oh well, thank you, Andrew. It's always a pleasure to be here. All right, and that's it for the Full Grip Games League Tournament. Brady Botner ended up going 4-0 with Whimsicott GX Porygon winning the whole tournament, able to beat uh, Giratina Malamar, I think it was Ultra Necrozma Malamar, in the final round. So pretty crazy results. Whimsicott taking the Full Grip Game League Tournament by storm. And uh, then we did see Matt finish in the top four with the Pika Pads deck as well. Congrats to all the players that showed up. Kendall for making 3-1 also. Great stuff. It was a very fun tournament to commentate over. Thank you to everybody who viewed the tournament. Uh, Thank you guys so much for your viewership tonight. Everybody who donated bits. Everybody who subbed to the channel. Thank you guys so much for your support and viewership. I'm going to be back tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time with some more Pokemon Trading Card Game Online action. So make sure to stay tuned for that 10 a.m. Thursday morning. We're going to pitch things over to Munner now, see if he's online for a little raid action. He's going to be starting with uh, his tag team here shortly, I think. He said he was going live soon. He said he's going live soon, so maybe we can uh, maybe we can buy it enough time until Riley gets on, so we can raid him. If not, uh, that's okay. Just uh, make sure to uh, make sure to check out Riley's stream. And uh, Riley, are you there? Are you there, Riley? Would like to raid you. Let's see, it's under Munner. Is where we're headed. He's not live yet. I don't think he's able to be Oh, he is live. Oh, good. He's live right now. Let's go, chat. All right, we're raiding Riley. Dash Raid Munner. Let's go. All right, y'all have a great time. Say hi to Riley and Otto. I was wondering who's going to be over there. JW is on his honeymoon right now. So let's go raid them. Y'all have a great night. Deuces.